All right, so I'm joined today by Mercer offensive lineman Jason Poe. Jason, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's up, man? How you doing, man? Appreciate you for having me on. Of course, I appreciate you making the time. I know you got a busy schedule. I know you're on the move a lot. It's a busy time. Draft coming up in a few days, honestly. Um, but, you know, I appreciate you making the time. Of course, man. Anything. All right, so, you know, let's, let's kind of start uh, from the beginning, I guess. You know, growing up, you didn't really play a ton of football. Uh, it wasn't until high school, I believe, that you kind of – you tried out, eventually made the team. What was it that made you want to start playing football and, you know, get into the sport? Uh, man, one reason, you know, uh, me and my friend, Lucina Smith, you know, we started around the same time. We was in class, like, in the 10th grade year. I looked at him. They was calling, like, the football over the intercom. And it was like, anybody want to join on JV for bodies and stuff like that? So we already seen the guys wearing the jerseys and stuff and getting the food and stuff on Fridays and every day, so stuff like that. So we was like, I asked Lucina, I was like, do you want to go? He's like, I don't care. I was like, let's go, man. We got if we're gonna do it, we gotta work hard every day. So ever since then, man, it's just been paying off. There you go. And he and I, he was so he was on your team. He didn't play offensive line, right? Wasn't he a tight end or something? Or he was a tight end, yep. Yeah. And it wasn't until he got to college that they moved an offensive line. And now now look at him. Now he's you know, he's an NFL draft prospect, just like you. Exactly. That's amazing. That's awesome. Uh, you know, so obviously you weren't super highly recruited coming out of high school. You ended up spending a year at, I think it was Hutchinson Community College in Kansas. Uh, and you primarily played fullback there, if I'm correct. What, what was that year like for you, both from like a personal growth standpoint and, you know, hey, now you're, you know, you're totally playing a new position, you know, that, that standpoint as well. Uh, first of all, you know, it kept me tough, you know, because you got to come out back and hit somebody, run full speed, and just ram them like a ram. So other than that, it was good. And then, you know, from a learning standpoint, it taught me like how to run back actually, you know, thinks about his cuts and stuff like that and where the blockers and how you got to be behind the guard. Because I'm used to people being behind me. So that just just helped me even more, you know, in my terminology on the offensive line when I'm pulling a double team and where they're going to fit. So and then also like the, the calls and the personnel and the plays. So the motions and, and, you know, just discussing this stuff like that because it's different from the offensive line. So learning all that helped me. Right. And you can see elements of that in your game now, because obviously I feel like you pride yourself on being able to pull and get out and block in space. And you see that obviously with your, your days as a fullback and you kind of see that transition there. And I think that, it, you know, I think it still, uh, it shines through to this day. Exactly. Uh, you know, obviously you know, some schools like what they saw uh, because you ended up getting an offer to play offensive line again at D2 Lenore Ryan and you, you jumped at it. Uh, how did that whole process go for you? Did they did they want you playing offensive line? You know, was it was it something they they saw for maybe your high school tape? Yeah, high school. They're like, man, you you're a good offensive lineman. So, man, they they don't want to see if I still had. It. I said, I'll do anything you need me to do, and I did it. There you go. Yeah, and it, and it clearly worked out. Uh, you know, you you spent a couple of years there. It was a very decorated career. You left to go to Mercer uh, for your final season. I know you were able to reunite with your former coach of Drew Chronic there. Uh, how difficult was that decision for you to leave uh, Lenore Ryan to go to Mercer? Uh, it was it was a bit of, you know, I would say that because, you know, Lenore Ryan was my home. I mean, you know, living there, you know, leaving some of my teammates. But, you know, you always have to, you know, better yourself sometimes. And, you know, it's just the best. And it was COVID and stuff like that. I wanted to see my family be close to them so they can come to games and stuff like that. So that, that meant a lot to me, you know, be close to my family. That was the main thing. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, at, at Mercer you actually had the opportunity uh, to play against Alabama. I believe that was like your second game there or something. You're just thrown right into the fire. Uh, what was that experience like for you, you know, making the trip to Tuscaloosa, playing in front of like damn near 100,000 people? That It must have been <laughs> surreal. Yeah, it was surreal. Man. It was crazy and, and excited at the same time. Because like you say, we played a, a team from our conference or something like that first game, and they jumped into the best team at that time, best team at the college football. You got to – NFL draft was all, all over the board. So it was amazing seeing the fans screaming and yelling, you know, look at Mercer, stuff like that. You know, we scoring twice, more than Miami. So, hey, all those memories make me great. Right. I mean, you go from Juco to D2 to playing against Alabama, you know, just like that. That must have been a wild transition process for you. Uh, you had the opportunity to compete at this year's College Gridiron Showcase. Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about that experience, because honestly, I'm I'm not too familiar with it. And I imagine a lot of others aren't as well. So what was that experience like? Man, it was great, man. Shout out to Mike Riddleman, man. It, it's one of the best all-star games, like for real. Like the way they had it set up and the, 
the practice, man, and going one on one, like it was really a lot of work. Like it wasn't no time that like, we just go and go and go. Whoever want to get to work, so I went in there a lot of times, man. I, I probably almost if I could have went every rep, man, they would have let me. So it was great, man. Shout out to CGS, man. Yeah, I was doing some research before, and there's there's a few players like who obviously have had success in the NFL who played in that game. I think it was Gunnar Olszewski was another was one of them from the Patriots. Uh, a few others. It's 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 one of those college all star games that I feel like deserves more attention than it gets. Uh, you know, now of exactly. course you, you, yeah, I mean you you have experienced playing both guard and fullback. I, I think you even played some center. Uh, have you gotten any indication from you know what where teams where they see you at the NFL level? Also, I guess where do you feel the most comfortable? I mean, I, I'm comfortable wherever I need to train at, but uh, some teams want me at center or guard, some want me at fullback, so some want me at both. So like line up at guard and they've got some special packs. So a lot of teams think that I'm a unique, so that's a great factor. So the more you can do, the more they want you to do. So that's how I always think about it. So that's good, man. Yeah, for sure. I was I was about to say, you know, I feel like I feel like this question is gonna be very interesting because you're such a unique talent, you have such a unique skill set. Uh, but are there any players that you kind of model your game after or just just like to watch? I would say uh, at guard, probably like Quentin Nelson. I like the way he pulls and the way he, you know, go down dirty, hitting people, stuff like that. And I say my mindset like a Ray Lewis type. So you mix those two players together, you know, that's a nasty guy. That's, oh, man, a Quentin Nelson, Ray Lewis mindset, that's, whew, like you said, that's nasty. Uh, <laughs> are there any, you know, you don't, don't have to answer this, of course. Feel free to, you know, don't answer. But uh, are there any teams that have shown a little more interest than others that you could – you know, see yourself play with, you know, come draft day, whatever you get, you get the call and it's like, Oh, it's this team. Not a surprise. I got, you know, I got some teams that, you know, like me and stuff like that, you know, just got to keep it, you know, I like to keep home. I don't like talking about, you know, the process and stuff like that and keep it between me and my agent, but you know, just, I think it's going to be a good, you know, whatever happens at the end of the day, I want a shot. And if I get the shot, you know, somebody take me to draft, that's fine. If not, that's fine. But, you know, I'm trying to do everything I can, you know, my part and let God control the rest. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I do have to ask since we're a Jets podcast, have the Jets shown any interest at all? Again, you don't have to answer, of course, but have they shown? I, I, I got to ask only because, you know, I'm from a Jets side. I got to ask. I feel I feel obliged to. <laughs> hey, I think I talked to him before, so hey, I'll give you that. All right. There you go. There you go. I'm glad to hear it <laughs> uh, real quick before we end. Just want to do a couple like quick hitter questions, you know, just some fun questions. Uh, you know, what, what are your favorite hobbies outside of football when you're not playing? What do you like to do? Man, I like getting up at like 4 30 morning working out. I ain't gonna lie, just working out, going crazy. And I read my Bible here and there. So I like to work, read that from time to time every day. So doing that. And if I can help somebody, I do that. So that's my main hobbies. I really don't watch a lot of TV, but what I do, you know, I watch, you know, whatever the upcoming things or sports or something like that. So that's what I do. That's about as wholesome of an answer as you could have given. I like to help people work out and read the Bible. That's like as wholesome as it gets. I like it. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, what is your go-to karaoke song? So it's not like your favorite song, but if somebody gave you a mic right now and said, hey, you got to sing, what are you singing? Oh, let's see. I'll probably say uh, Michael Jackson beat it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I dig some MJ. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right, man. Well, Jason, I appreciate you taking time. I really do. Uh, I know you got a busy couple of weeks still coming up and, you know, with, with interviews and everything, but Best of luck with everything. Best of luck with the draft. You know, I'm pulling for you. Hope, hopefully it's the Jets. Hopefully it's the Jets. Hey, you never know, man. Guy got a plan, so we'll see. It's coming up, so it's inevitable. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time.